What's up everybody, welcome. It's Dustin, Berserker Bear, coming to you with another edition of Bushwhacking Tartaria. Today we are at the Our Lady of Victory, or OLV Basilica in Lackawanna, New York. Actually, it's just south of Buffalo, just south of the city line of Buffalo. And we're going to go through some pictures. We're going to go through some history. I'm going to tell you about how every kid in Buffalo who was born before a certain date. I'm not sure what that date was, but or what that date is. But every kid was told that if you were bad, you were going to get sent to Father Baker. Uh, we have orphans in this one. And uh, orphan trains, if they came, uh, if, there, if there were orphan trains, and I'm sure they were. They probably came from Buffalo. There's anomalies in the literature, as usual. We have comic books of Father Baker. He's a very influential man in our city. As far as taking care of orphans, taking care of the, the wayward, taking care of infants, uh, taking care of downtrodden mothers. So uh, we got a lot to go through. So, sorry for the wait, but I uh, hope you like it, and uh, let's get right into it. Sorry about that, getting used to that. That's a little bit of the reason why... It took a little bit longer to get this one out. I'm trying to train myself on my the operating system that I use, so it is what it is. So here we are. This is the Our Lady of Victory Basilica in Lackawanna, New York. Now, not only do we have the basilica, we also have that very influential character. Who we're going to read some articles about again Father Baker every kid in Buffalo maybe be before I guess 85 1985 maybe earlier or maybe let's just say 1985 if you were born on that date or before you were probably told if you were bad you were going to get sent to Father Baker's Everybody knew Father Baker was the orphanage of Buffalo. And back at the turn of the last century, it was the Our Lady of Victory Human Services. And we're going to go over that article. We're going to go over a timeline of stuff. Read all these articles. I'll show you pictures of what they propose for the, or put forth as construction photos. We'll go, uh, we'll go over a little bit of the orphanage and the orphan gravy. There's not too much orphan information as far as I can extrapolate on the cursory level. But we'll go over that. We'll go over old pictures and anomalous pictures that I think um, pose a greater question even than the orphans. And it has to do with the architecture. Again, I have uh, boots on the ground cornerstone stuff and uh, slideshow video as well so what I'm gonna do is read these articles and give a, a general overview of a timeline effectively I also have a timeline written down because going through the literature one thing that I found especially oh we have clips too I have clips from this video it's called building a basilica documentary and it is all about building this basilica and Father Baker and his plight in um, becoming a priest, becoming ordained, going to visit with the, uh, with the Pope and uh, taking care of and uh, being the director of the Our Lady of Victory Human Services here in Buffalo, New York. Again, I have this timeline. So it was hard going through this literature, to be honest with you, and extrapolating a proper timeline. And that's one thing that I find very interesting is that 
the information and the data is very diffuse and it's hard to put together a cohesive timeline just by reading cursory as I do. So not that it was hard to put together a timeline, but um, here, for example, here's an article that I have from uh, Buffalo News. What it looked like Wednesday, Father Baker's boys. So it was a boys reformatory for, again, uh, wayward and abandoned boys, children, infants. And in this article it says, if you were, or if you keep misbehaving, I'll send you to Father Baker's. So it's definitely a trope in Western New York that pretty much everybody knows that's my age and, and uh, older. I was born in 1983. So Father Baker's, the orphanage, Father Baker, kind of an interesting name. We also have articles that detail they found a gas well on the property. There goes my picture of all the orphans. We got a lot to go through. New York Times articles that state that uh, kids were just sent from New Jersey to Buffalo with a sign that says Father Baker on them. Very interesting, but he was a very beloved man. This is his funeral. A lot of people were at his funeral. Uh, it was a really, really big deal. So let's get right into it. Again, uh, we got boots on the ground. I'm going to do that for you. We'll get you set up square there. And uh, please bear with me because I'm just getting my bearings again. Chill, here we go. So Father Baker, Our Lady of Victory, Basilica. And it's not just the Basilica, it's Father Baker. It's also these other, um, these other houses and dorming houses. Some of, uh, one of them, I believe this one was the Infant Asylum, okay, that's, that's what they would call it. Now it's something different, obviously. I believe uh, this is the, um, this might be the infant house now. Well, let's go through it. I have pictures of, of everything. I got boots on the ground of everything. We'll go through and correlate it with and against the timeline that I have also. And uh, there's some other stuff that I have. This is, a, this is a death mask of Father Baker, which I find extremely interesting. It seems like they were trying to get him canonized in the process of getting him canonized, but uh, he was only venerated. He's a, vener he's a venerable Father Baker now. So, um, yeah, what I'm going to do is read these articles, and I'll, I will put these articles in the description. i got to start doing that. I apologize, and I'll do it. This one is a very important one. I'm going to read these are articles that I'm going to be reading from the official Father Baker website and the official Our Lady of Victory website. So we'll start from there and we'll branch off and I'm actually going to show you the video that I that I did boots on the ground walking around the place because the story is very interesting in that um, per usual the initial parish which is called St. Patrick's Parish burnt down and um, allegedly they say it made way for the new basilica. But I have some questions and I also have a hypothesis and a theory. Because there's some anomalies, of course. So let's get right into it. And uh, again, this is Bushwhacking Tartaria with Berserker Bear, Our Lady of Victory Basilica, Father Baker. If you are, if you are bad in Buffalo, you are going to get sent to Father Baker. Oh boy. So, this is where we are. I started, I pretty much parked right about in this vicinity right here. Okay, and um, let's see if we can't do that zoom in little graphic thingamajiggy that I used to do. Okay, so here we are. Now this is just south of South Park in Buffalo. I'll get you a bird's eye view in a second. And uh, I believe this is the old infant asylum. And we're going to look at old pictures of that. Right across the street would be the basilica. Of course the trees in the way. <laughs> but that's where I start off my boots on the ground. And we're right at that. 
at that beautiful um, beautiful statue of Our Lady of Victories referring to Mary, Mother Mary, the Mother of Jesus Christ. If anybody is confused about that. So as we go over, and you, you can watch me do the boots on the ground, I'll read from the Our Lady of Victory Human Services. It began with the Boom Our Story article. So the Our Lady of Victory Human Services traces its history back to the 1850s when mass immigration began in western New York area. As the Erie Canal turned Buffalo into a prosperous boomtown, people from all over the world came to this vibrant city on, the, on Lake Erie. This rapid growth, though, resulted in increases in crime, disease, poverty, leading to many children to be abandoned or left parentless. As the need to house these youth grew, a two-story orphanage was built by Catholic diocese in what is then known Limestone, or excuse me, Limestone Hill, New York. Limestone Hill, New York, was is what Lackawanna was was called previously, a suburb of Buffalo, directly south of Buffalo. Shortly after, St. John's Protectory was built to address another social concern at the time. Boys inclined to truancy or disobedience. By 1864, the problem of abandoned children was so severe that the orphanage was expanded and a massive four-story building replaced the old structure. Okay. Although many individuals have contributed to the growth and success of the organization that would one day become Our Lady of Victory Human Services, one name stands out. Father Nelson Baker took over superintendent in 1882. He immediate pla immediately placed his fingerprint on the institutions, removing bars from the windows of the protectory and rebuilding rooms to reflect a more home-like atmosphere. There are no bad boys, unquote, was his response to those that was was his response to those that worried these children would cause havoc throughout the community. The next two decades brought enormous expansion to what had become known as Our Lady of Victory Institutions. The Protectory was expanded in 1893 and two years later a gym, recreational hall, and a new school were added. During this time New spread of thousands of infant bones found in area waterways. Horrified, Father Baker opened OLV Infant Home in 1906 to house and care for abandoned babies and their socially stigmatized unwed mothers. Now I got a site real quick. I just shared a video that uh, Cam from Autodidactic did about um, the orphans in Ireland. And that was amazing. So this is a good tale off of that. And he was saying that there were some stories similar to that. Or they were just like mass graves found. And this is kind of interesting because it's a little bit parallel to that. And I, it's definitely, I, I shared that in my community tab. That uh, should be the most recent one for you. So I definitely recommend checking that one out. It's Autodidactic 2, Campbell's most recent. So they were finding infant bones in area waterways. My word. Okay, let's continue on. There you go. See that? Boots on the ground. All right. Before his death at the age of 94 in 1936, Father Baker added OLV Hospital and uh, working boys and girls homes to his lengthy list of accomplishments. So... With that, let's go into the history of the shrine. In 1916, tragedy struck what was then St. Patrick's Parish. Fire ripped through a small church, completely destroying the spire and damaging the assembly area, or excuse me, damaging the assembly area considerably. 
Within days, the pastor, 74-year-old Father Nelson Baker, ordered the church to be repaired, but oddly held off on fixing the spire. Hmm, that's interesting. Because in the clip that we're going to see, they say that the, the spire fell over. I'm going to play that uh, shortly. Actually, we'll, we'll play it after we go over these uh, pictures. He had something else in mind. So he didn't. He held off on fixing the spire, per this article, because he had something else in mind. Later, at a routine parish meeting, Father Baker unveiled his plan to build a beautiful shrine to marvel the majestic churches of Europe. Speaking before an astonished crowd, the humble priest outlined his desire to have the finest materials and artists come together to create a true masterpiece. His way of paying homage to the patroness, Our Lady of Victory. On May 7, 1921, Father Baker celebrated the last Mass at St. Patrick's, which was then immediately dismantled to make way for something much more magnificent. So keep that in mind. It was immediately dismantled to make way for something more magnificent. Okay? Keep this. This is very important. Okay, Father Baker. Knowing that he had not set aside a penny for the new shrine's construction did not seem to bother the aging priest. He was confident that yet again the Blessed Mother would kindly would look kindly on him and she did. Father Baker sent out a call for support and it was answered by thousands of loyal donors happy to assist such a project. Some contributed through Association of Our Lady of Victory, Father Baker's pioneering direct mail fundraising program while countless others sent donations both large and small so uh, a little bit um, forward in the in the video you're gonna see that it says Father Baker is officially recognized by the federal post office as being the first um, mail order solicitation ever by um, for this specific reason to garner fundraising for this very this very basilica because they were building it as it says in the as it says in the article from the ground up they had to dismantle and um, take down St. Patrick's Church in order to build the basilica now there's some anomalies with that that I'm going to I'm going to state after I show you the pictures here that don't add up as far as the pictures they put forward and against the, the literature the literature that I'm reading here so let's get let's get more into it so he didn't set aside any money and he had to start soliciting from not only local parishioners but he went nationwide and he would actually write to postmasters and we'll see a, a, a pretty interesting clip about that where a priest is detailing exactly what he did in order to find that stuff or to get that, that, that funding. So let's read on. Another call to help. This one was to craftsmen and artisan, artisans worldwide. Was answered by a group of some of the biggest names in religious works. So it's, he's trying to get by on the cheap, but they, the biggest names in religious works and in architecture come by. Uh, namely, Emile Ulrich. A graduate of the Academy of Paris, he migrated to America in 1894 and opened an architectural firm in Cleveland, Ohio. Ulrich himself personally inspected all the artist's work before the United States and Europe in order to guarantee Father Baker's wish for finest materials and craftsmanship. So, finest materials and craftsmanship, the finest architects and um, artisans for this basilica that was built allegedly from the ground up. And, um, you know, stop and look at how beautiful that is. Absolutely gorgeous. So, where are we at here? One thing uh, that I noticed about when I'm going through this timeline also, that's the, um, the graveyard, or the... Um, 
I forget the name of it, actually. Let's get the unstool. So where I'm looking, because I came around the back, I like to do a 360 around the thing. I'm looking into this cemetery right here. I think it's Our Lady of Victory Cemetery, to be honest with you. Let's find out. is Holy Cross Cemetery okay so that's what I'm looking at back there and yeah it's just a beautiful structure it's huge it kind of reminds me of um, the structure and the shape of it kind of look like a little bit the back end of it look a little bit like the blue mosque in Istanbul and notice the different layers too there's a reason for that. There's a clip that I seen in the in that video. I'll set, I'll share that video too on my. Maybe I'll share it on my community tab. Possibly I'm not sure, but um, I might just share the link in my description. It says that it's like a building built within a building, which is extremely interesting. So what we'll do is, you're seeing the pictures now up close. And I'll also go through a whole bunch that I have in this slideshow. And maybe I'll play it as a slideshow and read some more of these articles. Now I'm going to read, I'm going to continue reading on to um, the story of Father Nelson Baker. Again, it's, it's very diffuse and everything is um, not in the same place. And there's not even a timeline for it. It's supposed to be a very historic monument here in Buffalo. Number one, that's very telling sign that something's anomalous about it. Okay, so here we go. Nelson Henry Baker was born February 16th, 1842. He was the second of four sons. Born to Lewis and Caroline Donnellan. At birth, Father Baker was baptized in the Lutheran faith, the faith of his father. When Nelson was 10 years old, under a spiritual influence of his devout Catholic mother, he was baptized in a Catholic church as a child. Nelson loved to accompany his mother to Mass. Now that's interesting because in the Wikipedia version of his early life, it says that he was baptized at age 9. And you can actually literally look that up. And I'll show it to you afterwards. But um, in the actual article that uh, is from fatherbaker.org. It says he was baptized at 10. And in the Wikipedia one says he was baptized at 9. That's an anomaly. He liked the company his mother to Mass. The family lived in a small but growing city of Buffalo, New York. Lewis Baker was a retired mariner who took advantage of the increased commerce that the opening of the Erie Canal brought to the Great Lakes region and became a proprietor of a grocery and general store in Buffalo's downtown. As was customary in those days, the family lived behind the store. While there is not a lot of official documentation that exists from Nelson's childhood, oh, fitting, it seems to have been a happy time for him. After graduating from high school, Nelson joined his father and brother working in the store. He was bright, good with figures, outgoing, with a wide range of interests. His future looking, uh, his future looked promising. Then the American Civil War broke out, of course. Pardon me. Of course, when the American Civil War broke out. In June 1863, General Robert E. Lee and his Confederate Army had moved into southern Pennsylvania. Fearful that the enemy would soon reach New York, the state called for 20,000 new recruits on the evening of Nelson's retirement. Right? On, the, on the evening of Nelson's enlistment, he and his fellow recruits were sworn in and boarded the train for Harrisburg, PA. Nelson's regiment, the 74th New York, served with 
uh, bravery and distinction. There protecting bridges and an aqueduct as, a confe as Confederate troops were forced to retreat. Now, he said 74th Regiment. I have a pretty cool artifact here from a work friend. Thank you, Cassandra. So that's for a work friend. That's the 74th Regiment. And the 74th Regiment is actually the Connecticut Street Armory right now, which is a castle pretty much in Buffalo. You know what? Buffalo, Connecticut Street Armory. That would be the 74th Regiment that Father Baker was stationed at. And, um, yeah, that's a castle. Look at that thing. That is now the Connecticut Street Armory, and it was the 74th Regiment where Father Baker was stationed. That's it right there. This is what you would call an artifact. And again, a work friend, a very good work friend, had that from a family friend. And I guarantee that work friend also remembers being told that if you were bad, you were going to be sent to Father Baker's. So let's get back over there. Oahu Basilica and Lackawanna. So yeah, he was sent to uh, the Civil War. He was also stationed at um, New York City during the, uh, the draft riots. So, we did that, and let's go do some more boots on the ground. Get a video. This is interesting right here. So this is on, this is to show you how things are retrofitted at the very least for what, you, what we would call mud flooded buildings. This building right here is the one right across the street from the Basilica. You can see the stairs right there. Okay. So, at the very least, what that proves is that it's retrofitted with the staircase because, I mean, I'm not sure if that's an old window or a door, but clearly this is an old window. And that's what we're talking about with street level windows during winter. It's just not, it's really not conducive. And what it means is that there's, that there were basin, basements here. And whether it was mud flood or we just found and buried, it's still very odd because it indicates two different construction time periods, but they're saying they're only built once. That's a very big anomaly. We don't know why. Matt from Quantum of Conscience, we're trying to figure that out. So yeah, this is definitely the old, I have old pictures of this. Okay, so this is what I think happened here. Since I had this picture, this is the old St. Patrick's that was on fire that the steeple fell off of. I have picture proof of that. This is old St. Saint, Saint Patrick's. Okay. That's a picture of it on fire in this article from the OLB Basilica. That's definitely St. Patrick's. So what, they, what they're saying in the official story, though, is that a they had to knock it down in order to make way for the basilica. But you see this picture right here, ladies and gentlemen? St. Patrick's is right there. And what's this building? Hmm. Huh. Looks awfully familiar. Huh. Right on the corner. Boy, one might think that they just retrofitted. This building. Into. 
the Basilica. Now, that's not what the official story says. The official story says it was, they did a groundbreaking, and the uh, St. Patrick's old one that was burned was taken down in order to make room for this Basilica. Let's get into that story. I'll show you the clip right now. So this documentary I found probably the best documentary about the Basilica and how it was made in Father Baker on YouTube called Building a Basilica Documentary. And I'm going to play some clips and we're going to, I'm going to make a, a case that uh, what they did effectively was, all they did was just retrofit this building right here into the Basilica. Things don't add up, and our, our, our timeline is a little bit uh, confusing, and um, I'll explain why. Here we go. 9 a.m., April 8, 1916. A fire breaks out at St. Patrick's Roman Catholic Church, where the congregation has just been dismissed from morning mass. 75-year-old priest, Monsignor Nelson Baker, is inside, kneeling at the altar steps, deep in prayer. Michael O'Mara, looking out of a post office window, sees smoke issuing from the church's belfry and calls the Victory Hose Fire Company. Parishioners rush into the church and carry out the chalice and other articles of value, fearing that they would be lost in the fire. The Victory Fire Captain arrives and finds Monsignor Baker still inside the church and warns him out. The Lackawanna and Buffalo Fire Departments also arrive to assist at the scene. A huge crowd gathers and witnesses the steeple swaying. The crowd shouts to the firemen working beneath it and they rush to safety as the smoking steeple crashes to the ground. Now let's just um, pause that and let's do it in real time. We'll do it live. for where it said that the steeple crashed to the ground or they didn't he didn't immediately okay here we go fire ripped through the small church completely des destroying the spire and damaging the assembly area. Within days, the pastor, 74 father, ordered the church to be repaired, but oddly held off on fixing the spire. Well, they just said that the spire completely fell down in that, in this video. So, and this is, a, okay, that's not footage of it. It's actually footage of another church burning and the steeple falling. It seems to be a common theme with Catholic churches, unfortunately. But um, it is what it is. Shown in history here. No one was seriously hurt. The fire report stated faulty wiring in the steeple caused the blaze. For many years. Of course. I also said that um, Father Baker was the first to be uh, recognized by the Federal Post Office as a mail order solicitation artist and i got a great clip here for you victory on the main altar father baker asks emil ulrich before he leaves for europe to draw a sketch of our lady of victory shrine to be used in a postcard campaign in some of the correspondence they had not really even reached the level beyond foundation but father baker wanted drawings so that they could print postcards and sell the postcards during Lent to raise money for finishing. So he's always thinking. He found ways to ask people for funds uh, in a way that he thought they would be able to help him, but wouldn't put a, a burden on people. And so he asked them to uh, send change to help build the, the uh, basilica. The uh, federal post office recognizes Father Baker as the founder of uh, mail order solicitation uh, he would send uh, letters to people all over the country 
Uh, he asked postmasters to put letters in the mailboxes of people who were Irish, had Irish last names, uh, thinking that they would be Catholic. Now that's interesting because, again, I'm on a site, Cam of Autodidactic 2, his recent video, because he did, he did the history of orphans in, in Ireland. And I want to, uh, and with that, I want to show you Oh yeah, here, here's the, now, it was a refrain commonly heard throughout our house as a child, if you keep misbehaving, I'll send you to Father Baker's, for sure, Every, everyone's mother said that to them. And then also we have a New York Times article that cites Father Baker, and it cites a couple of brothers, orphan brothers. They remember being put on a train in New Jersey with large tags around their necks that said, only Father Bakers. And they got here, meaning their Father Bakers. So they were being, that's why I said in the beginning, if they were orphan trains in America, they, they came from Buffalo. It said that there was like 100,000 kids that came through, orphans that came through Father Bakers. Um, I would say probably more than that. And he, again, he was a beloved man, but uh, the orphan narrative is extremely weird, extremely odd. So, um, first order, uh, first uh, mail order solicitation artist, Father Baker. And again, what I'm going to try to uh, show you here is that it, it looks to me like. They just retrofitted this building. Now, this is a picture that I got from that very documentary. They just passed by it, and you know what? I'll give you a, a close-up here. I couldn't find... Clearly, this is a map, and the map's got a, a key on it because there's numbers on here, and I'm familiar with that because... I look through these maps on the Library of Congress, but because this is a outside the city of Buffalo map, effectively, I can only find city of Buffalo once. Couldn't find Lackawanna. I couldn't find Limestone Hill. And speaking of Limestone Hill, let's get into those photos. So I, it looks like. Look at that dude. So it looks like this is a map. I can't find the maps though. And it, this to me looks, I mean, you, you tell me. And the way in which they said that the actual building was built. Let's just, let's just go to that one. Like a building with inside of a building. I think that that's all of a ruse and um, you know that the architect Emil Ulrich didn't even come on site effectively it was all done via correspondence with him and, and the, uh, the the um, the engineer or not the uh, maybe the architect where do you hear this still knee deep in it the basilica was sort of built in an odd manner. It was not totally designed before they started building it. So it was kind of like a work as you go type of thing. Bids for the materials and handiwork come in from many regions. Ideas for granite, marble, and terracotta are open to discussion, comparing prices to durability. Although being the most expensive, marble is ultimately decided to be the material of choice for the exterior of the shrine. The basement floor is to consist of steel reinforced concrete covered with granite to form the foundation. The granite foundation is, is the best because the granite is uh, really the most impervious uh, uh, natural material to water and snow and so on. And it can take a beating. 
he's an architect and he just cites water and snow and it, it could take a beating meanwhile you got buildings like this with two different foundational um, types of building this brick and this brick it's like what's going on you know so they started in a weird way it's a very unique place but it was started in an odd fashion like the lady said where it was started before the plans were even done well maybe that's because Emil Ulrich the architect wasn't even on site and he came on he 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 did visit one time we'll go over that in the timeline actually I should have had that I don't know why Emil Ulrich does come to visit the actual building of it and they, okay so the beginning started in 1921 and ended in 1926 that's why I highlighted these and Ulrich okay so he visits in 1923 to check on the heating and cooling system and in the video in that video it says the heating and cooling system well the cooling system that they used was they put a block of ice on a board and blew a fan over it and that was their cooling system and that's what Emil Ulrich wanted to visit in 1923 for make sure that was all good not anything else just the heating and cooling it's what the literally what it says in the video so yeah, if you want to pause that on this and do your own re research and look stuff up, that's officially what um, the timeline is of this place. So, yeah, I walk around and take pictures. I wonder if I can uh, do a slideshow for you later. And I'll read another um, article. Okay. Oh yeah, so they said that they, in the video, the last clip that we had, get off of this actually talking about how they wanted to use marble and this is the marble company that was used Georgia Marble Company and we all know marble is expensive but the next clip that I'm going to show you a lot of clips here but I have to have to use the the mainstream to get get my point across here okay this one's very important the desire to save money plays a major role in the layout of the exterior of the shrine. What I think is interesting for people to realize, and I as an architect have total respect for it, is that the exterior, especially on the back and the, the one side, is very simple. So this is a very expensive building and we have a lot of uh, carved detail, hand carved detail, and this all takes time and costs money. And so where do you stop? Nothing about that. Hand carved detail, nothing about that. Just says that the materials were grabbed, actually held up uh, at the border because they didn't have the money for the tariff. Stop. And they got a favor from high places there. We'll, get, we'll go over that. Do you stop anywhere? If you look at the back versus the front, there's a clear hierarchy and they're putting their money on the front. And I agree with that. I think that was the right thing to do. The shrine can be described as a building within a building. The steel frame and the marble exterior are both freestanding, independent of each other. When the marble expands and contracts due to changes in climate, 
the interior steel will not shift. This allows steel and marble work to be constructed at the same time. As the steel is going up or when it's up, uh, we're going to... Now, does this look like a legitimate construction picture to you? And has that, anyone ever heard of a construction site involving some um, materials like marble and steel? I think that this was construct. there was construction going on here. What they constructed was that steel frame around that, that other building, I believe, that I have pictures of. You know what, let me just pull one up. This one right here. And that's St. Patrick's. Catholics began to establish homes in Limestone, Limestone Hill, Lackawanna, about 1850. Boys homes were brought, Lancaster. So that's an article about St. Patrick's. That's St. Patrick's. That's St. Patrick's. What's this building? Well, that's probably what they're talking about here. They built around it. So this one was constructed, but it was constructed around a previous existing red brick, in my humble. I'm going to begin the walls. And the walls are going to be, in a sense, mainly their own structure. And they're going to be made out of the marble, but also brick. So they're fairly thick walls, and they support themselves in most places. Does that make any sense whatsoever? Is there a style of building where they build red brick? Literally mason red brick and then marble over it at the same time. But not having the plans done yet, like the lady said. This is what's extremely, extremely um, confused me. So they got marble from, from the Georgia Marble Company. And um, these pictures are unbelievable. So yeah, I mean... This is what they're saying construction picture is. And of course, what's a construction pic picture without it being hazy? And I mean, of course, you're going to want to build a basilica with um, power lines just all over the place. And, um, you know, what's a construction pick without a, a ladder? UAP? I mean, and then the vanilla sky. <laughs> and who builds with all this stuff, what are these boxes? So I do think, this is odd, I mean, it's half built here. They say they were gonna put marble on it, then they eventually went to copper. Why is the dome half built here when it's all steel? Doesn't make sense. These construction photos look hokey now. I'm not saying that effectively they didn't construct it. What I'm saying is they may be hiding their construction techniques and they don't want us to see it, certain parts of it, okay? I don't think this one was here as we see it like this. I think it was here as we see it as it was there. That, that's what was here. But the mainstream says that they built it from the ground up. No, they just retrofitted this thing. That's that's the anomaly. That's the major, major anomaly. And then why? Why are they lying? I think it's the same reason why it's so hard to extrapolate a timeline, to be honest with you. And when I go over the literature, literally had to watch that video three or four times. I had to read these articles three or four times. And then going through it and, oh yeah, the, oh, well, yeah, there's a death mask of him. It seems like they were trying to canon, get him um, canonized, which is sainted. But with so many anomalies like this, and it seems like he was bad at managing money, they found a gas line on this property also. Excuse me. So they found a gas line on this property, but he still had to get money, keep on getting money from the parishioners and soliciting. But 
1,137 foot deep gas line. They struck gas. I've never heard anything about that until I see this article. Heritage Moments with Father Baker's Miracle at Our Lady of Victory. I'm not going to read this whole thing. It's a little natural gas was being discovered across the region, and Baker figured there might be gas beneath the parish land as well. But where exactly he didn't know, so he prayed for before a small statue of Our Lady of Victory, convinced Bishop Stephen Ryan uh, of the Buffalo Archdiocese to lend him the funds to hire gas drillers and got ready for the big day. The story of that day is told of Our Lady of Victory's official website. When the drillers arrived with their equipment, the foreman asked Father Baker where the bit drilling began. His team was amazed when a huge procession of altar boys, sisters, brothers, Father, uh, Father Baker exited the church carrying candles and praying the rosary. They, pr pr they processed into an open field until Father Baker stopped, sprinkled the ground with holy water, took a small statue of Our Lady out of his pocket, dug a hole in the ground, buried the statue, and told the workers, dig here, but try not to disturb the statue. It took workers another loan from the archdiocese, but finally the drillers reached the incredible depth of 1,137 feet and they struck gas. It came the Victoria Well, provided natural gas for the entire parish complex, with enormous savings that helped fund Father Baker's future projects. It's still producing gas today. Never heard of it, ever. Extremely interesting. So yeah, back to that. It seems like they built this structure around an old red brick. That's the major anomaly. And this is, they were originally going to put marble around this and then Father Baker wanted copper. These are the old towers. That towers were the steeples were removed due to an electrical storm. Of course I have a uh, clip about that. So in that last clip though I said it said that they were trying to save money of course but everything was done with the, the finest of things. And he was always trying to get more money. And they found a gas well on the on the property and they still had to have um, more 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 money uh, given to them. For example, let's just go over all these clips very quick. Tanetti brothers. Tenetti brothers. One unexpected favor occurs at this time. President Calvin Coolidge and the United States Congress grant Father Baker the right to have the marble for the shrine coming from abroad to be admitted duty-free to the United States. Duty-free. So that wasn't the marble they were using for the exterior. That was from the Georgia Marble Company. The the marble that was held up by the Fanetti brothers at, at the at the border um, was from Italy, and he wasn't able to pay the duty on it, and he got it. Like I said earlier, he got a favor from high places, and um, from Calvin or from the President Coolidge and Congress, they actually waived the tariffs on the marble, so Father Baker didn't have to pay for. It. What about the the gas well? You couldn't throw any of that out. Like I don't understand. It always seems to be about money with them to be honest with you and here's an interesting thing what the, a couple uh, videos ago I was doing these are all construction photos they provide from the actual uh, video and look at a building inside of a building who builds like that I don't think anybody does and I think it's purpose um, it's obvious obvious that they they built the shell around it i mean the architect says that 
It was built in an interesting style with a brick first and then marble on the outside. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So is he just misinformed? I don't know. I'm not going to say anything. It just seems he's misinformed, and we'll leave it at that. But look at what's going on right here. Marble outside, and, you know, this is just a facade, effectively. Look at it. A facade over the red brick. I mean, right, right in plain sight. Look at that. They're telling us they built this thing from the ground up, and they did a brick, brick first with these arches first and this there's build out over this there's a sun blaze over that arch look at look at this that's how they did this I, I doubt it there's an anomaly here and this is the quarry they got this is Georgia quarry effectively there you go you see those mr. Brees do those look like Lego building blocks to you? They do to me. Megalithic building blocks. That's what I think the plane is. Look at, look at that. What does that look like to you? It almost looks like it could be a place in um, Egypt, to be honest with you. Like the unfinished pyramid. The ones that go in the ground. Look at that. This is interesting. These are pictures that are right, right in this documentary. I mean, what's going on here? Georgia Marble Company. Every time that they mention construction, these are the photos that they show in, in the um, in the video. Look at that. What does that look like to you? A mastaba almost? Step pyramid? Mastaba? Possibly. What's up with these chunk, chunky bricks up here? And look at this equipment. You know, they, they did have the ability to move these big things. To the precision that they did, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. But they de definitely did have the ability to move huge, huge chunks of earth for sure. But to the precision, no. And I, I think that's what part of the reason why they like to cover stuff up is they are constructing I believe they are constructing things or deconstructing in certain cases because an electrical storm um, knocked both of these things that that one looks perfectly fine I don't understand so it's construction and destruction I think they definitely constructed this thing I think they put out fake construction photos so they're not showing you the real uh, what they're actually doing, okay, how they're actually manipulating this stuff, okay, um, they probably did use some machines, but this is clearly a fake, clearly not a real construction photo, this is absolutely ridiculous, you don't build with wires like that, uh, a beautiful building like this, how they say that it's, it's, it's such awe-inspiring, you don't build like that, in my opinion, I think it's absolutely ridiculous, so, all I'm saying is it looks like this is a fake picture, right? Uh, this could be a real picture. You know, I think they definitely did construct that dome because there was a, a problem with, with the dome where it uh, burst out and damaged some of the, the actual masonry. It's, it's actually stipulated in that video. But they still did it in five years, though. Very, very interesting. And speaking of that, let's just go right to the steeple removal. Years, yeah. The Our Lady of Victory Basilica, however, has undergone some physical changes over the years. When uh, Father Baker asked Ulrich to give him a sketch of what the church would be like, the basilica would be like, uh, Ulrich gave him a chalk drawing. And if you took that drawing, you held it up to the outside of the facade of the basilica today, it's almost identical. The difference being that the towers on the outside of the church were about 30 feet taller than they are at the present time. In the 40s, they were destabilized by an electrical storm and uh, the towers had to be taken down to a certain level. And then they capped them off with a copper cap that matched the dome this is a church i don't get it but in that picture i mean look at this you can see i got that picture from down to a certain level and then they 
that looks absolutely fine. Why they do that, I have no idea. Why they take the steep? Is it Antiquitech? They're removing the components of being able to harness the free energy. Uh, I don't know that answer. But it's extremely interesting. Now, here's the kicker, and this is the last clip that I'm going to show. Uh, it's in with these anomalous construction photos, especially when you, when you look at this one. It's really, really telling this one. It's like, what were they doing? Notice how they don't show any. There's no videos. There is video capable technology at the time, of course. They don't show it. I think that they just want to hide their Masonic building techniques. You know, so, so this is a prime example of, I don't think that we came or found this building as it was. Okay. We built around it. We built around an existing building. It looks like we built around this building. This one was burned down. This was the old St. Patrick's Parish. Okay. That was burned out and made way for, you know, the promenades, in, which is effectively what the basilica is. Basilica, a large oblong hall or building with double colonnades and a semicircular apse. Used in ancient Rome as a court of law or for public assemblies. And then these would be the promenades. Okay. Now they just widened. Effectively what I think they did was just widen this. You know, they moved, they got, they took this down. This is the boys seminary house right here. I got some pictures of that. We'll go over. What they did was that's where St. Patrick would, was right here. And that was taken down from the fire to make way for the, uh, the plans here. But this building was already there. That's the building they're talking about when it's a building built within a building. This is the building right here that we're seeing. And look at notice how the trees cover up those arches because they probably knew there was a picture out there in the Aether being this one. And to be honest with you, it's probably covering up those arches. Looks like it's that side of it. It's just unbelievably odd that they would do that. Steeples get taken down in the, another electric storm. Same thing happened to the other church that I did. St. Anne's, I believe. There you go. Lightning hit these steeples too, or, or something hit these steeples to take it down, I believe. And it's funny because driving around the other day with the family, and um, look what I seen at a local church terminal. It was very windy, and terminal broke. Oh yeah, that's that's the reason why they say they took off the, the steeples of the St. Anne's because the weather vane broke. And of course you can see how how because the weather vane broke how much damage it does to the steeple. None at all. Meaning that that's a BS story to take down an entire steeple. Just like it's a BS story I think to take down two steeples when one of them looks entirely fine when you say an electrical storm damaged them. Doesn't add up. Why it doesn't add up, I don't really, I'm not really sure of that. But let's get to some of the, now, here's the deal. The, the Our Lady of Victory, as we um, read in that, our story on the Our Lady of Victory humanservices.org website, they were created in the 1850s. Now, if we go back to the timeline, Father Baker was born in 1842. Uh, Our Lady of Victory Human Services was created in the 1850s. Father Baker went to Civil War, 1863. 
1869, he enters Our Lady of Angels to become a priest, effectively. So he goes to the war, comes back home, says, I don't want to work anymore, goes and uh, checks into the, in, into the priesthood. Um, 1874, this is very important. I'm glad that I came back to this. In 1874, he went on a pilgrimage to meet Pope Pius IX. Okay. Came back March 19th. He was ordained a priest. Okay. And then in 1882, to go back to where we are here with these uh, Our Lady of Victory human services, where they were taking care of orphans, orphans from New Jersey. You know, if you're if you're bad, you're going to go to Father Baker. It's a very interesting trope. If there were orphan trains, they came from Buffalo. It seems like um, he was a beloved character because he was taking care of these kids. The intent is um, I'm not placing any. Any kind of uh, judgment on that whatsoever. Um, it just seems that there was a lot of anomalies with the, the research here. And that's all I'm going to say. Okay. Um, so 1882, he became superintendent. He also went to Corning, New York on assignment. And he came back and the parish, the Our Lady of Victory was in debt. Okay. And that's when he had to start the mail order solicitation stuff that we already addressed. Uh, they got the natural gas well in 1891, 1,137 feet deep. That's major. It's huge, and I never even heard of it. We should have been taught that. I was taught that uh, if I was bad, I'd get sent to Father Baker. I knew he was an orphanage guy, but that's about it. A father. But Father Baker, as head of the orphanage, is kind of creepy. Also that he's named Father Baker. Baker. Odd. Okay. 1906, infant home opened. Because of the babies found, uh, the article that I read. Okay, Bishop Henry passes. Father Baker stands in. Father Baker then gets sent to St. Mary of Angels, where he originally met Emil Ulrich. Emil Ulrich is the designer, architect of the Basilica, who never showed up, only to check on the ice and the heating thing. And the ice was uh, the cooling system. There you go. 1916 is the, the St. Patrick's Fire. Um, so 1921 is effectively when they say the shrine starts to be built. Groundbreaking, you know. It's not even Father Baker that does the, the cornerstone, and the cornerstone's a huge, huge deal. It's supposed to be laid by Jesus, right? Um, so Father Bishop William Turner lays the cornerstone in 1921. Emil Ulrich remains in Cleveland. He visits in 1923 to make sure that that ice fan's doing good. Um, and then 1924, he goes to Italy for the interior marble. And that marble that was sent from Italy was the same marble that got held up by the Frenetti brothers because they weren't paid on a tariff. But Coolidge came in with that one in, in Congress. Uh, gave Father Baker a favor. So, and then um, December 1925, Baker holds the first Mass in the Basilica, although it wasn't fully completed because the marble was held up. Okay? And then uh, 1926, he, in 1926, he got that favor. And um, the marble from Italy. And May 25th of 1926 is when the Basilica was officially dedicated. Now, that's why I say it's confusing because they don't necessarily say a, 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 con, a, a real solid confirmed uh, beginning date and a really solid confirmed ending date. It's, it's kind of a wishy-washy, you have to pull it out of the literature. It's, it's, very, it's not confusing, it's just hard to, to, to find. And the way that it's, it's worded in five different articles, it's, um, again, I, I hate to be repetitive, but it's not hard, it's difficult. So, five years to complete that. By doing a double build, effectively, a building with inside of a building. A mason work job inside of, and then he did, doing marble. Ho however they did that. And then Father Baker passed in 1936. And that's when the, the steeples came off in the 40s. And there's not even a specific date for it, to be honest with you. So that's the story of how the Our Lady of uh, Victory was uh, human services and uh, all the orphans and the babies that were being found and the wayward mothers and everything. And he was looked at as benevolent because he was taking care of that problem. 
allegedly. But yeah, there was a whole campaign done of um, Father Baker's Little Ones. There was comic books made. Notice how they had the cloud in the background to try to hide. Now this is this would have been after the 40s. So it's got the dome caps on them. Right, we established that. Comic books about them. About how we prayed to the Our Lady of Victory. You know, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I'm Christian. I'm, I'm not ashamed to say that whatsoever. I shouldn't even say that I'm ashamed. Not ashamed to say it, to be honest. I just find that uh, the, the the history with these Roman Catholic churches is quite quite interesting, especially when they a lot of them burned down. And uh, when you incorporate orphans and babies and and the whole system set up to uh, send babies to a certain place, you know that doesn't seem to have been run uh, economically too sound because they always seem to have needed money. And uh, stuff like this, you know, it just looks at it looks um. I, under, I agree with you, Mr. Brees, my homie. This was um, quite a weird one. So Father Baker, a very benevolent uh, character in Buffalo. If you were bad, though, you were going to get sent there. And uh, he had a lot to do with the building of this basilica and um, the Our Lady of Victory Human Services uh, early in the 1900s and late 1800s. A very, very um, big figure here in Buffalo. And there's just a lot of anomalies with uh, the literature and the history. And when you look up also the construction photos, there's questions, uh, big time, big time anomalies here. The women were the orphans. So yeah, what I think in summation, and I'll wrap this up pretty much going on here is that I think when they say a building with inside of a building you know they show you their hand a lot of times and this is a picture that I got from that documentary that I cited I think that definitely this building was here St. Patrick's was um, burned down to make way for the additions of the promenade and all this stuff to turn this into a basilica trying to get uh, one venerable Father Baker in the running to get canonized a saint but um, maybe he didn't hire the right CFO for the OLV services you know what I'm saying I, I, I don't know or, or the fact that a cursory look into the a cursory research dive into this brings up a whole bunch of anomalies that even myself can find. So maybe putting the spotlight of the canonization on the Father Baker might not be in the best interest of of the, the papacy, if you will. And again, with all due respect and all, all, all the honor that's given um, as such, but uh, again, I'm Christian, so I'm researching this, and it's um, I have right to do such, and I'm not making any claims. I'm just questioning. So with that, um, yeah, Father Baker, very very interesting cat. I think that what they did was made way, took this down, and literally just refitted this building right here into this building. They said that they built it from the ground up doesn't add up literature was diffuse difficult to make a timeline but i got one it's there for you pause it record it look into this guy look into this history it's very interesting another thing that i'll cite too that cam said is that one of the biggest places in all of these old worlds is the insane asylum and i do agree with you there can because I can go find ours. Oh boy, can I? Yes, I can. The Buffalo Psychiatric Center is one of the biggest buildings here in Buffalo. And I don't even know if I can find it right now. 
There it is. Massive complex. Definitely one of the biggest building complexes in the city of Buffalo. And it's an insane asylum, or it was at the turn of the last century. Cam, what you said is definitely correct, for sure. And um, not only that, we're north to south here. Another thing that I want to uh, point out, uh, wrapping this up, is, um, you know, it's hard to extrapolate a timeline, for sure, looking at my notes. And um, the reason why it's hard to extrapolate a timeline, I think, is the same reason why they don't want us to know why they uh, covered up a building. You know, I don't know what that reason is, Matt, from Quantum of Conscience. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, I'll address that right now, too. I mean, you know, I put a comment in your last video. I appreciate you calling us out and everything, you know, but I'm um, using Michelle's whole video to uh, to, to uh, professionally call us out, which is cool. I, that's awesome. I like that. It's like per perked us up, and you got an answer from me professionally. You got an answer from Cam, a whole video. And uh, I'm just being honest with you. I don't think you, you addressed the, our, our professional answers to you. You know, it's kind of like you blew it off. And um, I like your show and nothing against it. And nothing against you whatsoever. But uh, I took the opportunity when you professionally called us out to attack it. It was awesome. Cam did too. Campbell did. And Autodidactic did. Um, John Levi did also. And in my opinion... You know, it, it's your answer was just like, oh, I don't, it's not worth it. I don't care. Well, then why did you use her video, Michelle's video, then, if, it, if that's your answer? I think it's it, it's warranted to address our rebuttals to you, or at least our answers to you. You know, professionally, of course, keep crushing. I really like your show. Uh, you seem like you get it. That's a really cool wood burning stove you got there. That was a great one. So um, that's what I'll say about that, Matt. We don't know, I and mean, we're, we're still trying to find it out. Um, what's the knot milk? <laughs> you know, um, that's that. So, yeah, I think that they made this building into the Basilica. Right here. That's what I think. And it was hard to find a... Timeline, that was a very tough thing. And uh, another thing I want to say, a lot of these Roman Catholic churches, they get burned down. And uh, this is north to south. I'll end with this. The floor plan here is inverted. If you can see that, I'm not even going to manifest it to say it. Okay, again, we're, we, we're situated here. Top is north, bottom is south. Okay, if you could see what I'm saying, you got the swoosh and the swoosh. It's an in, it's an inverted cross for sure. I also noticed that up because I brought up the the insane asylum. I did also notice that uh, well, maybe it wasn't that one. We do have a cross here that's not inverted, but it's not there. Maybe it was St. Anne's, and that's on Broadway. Maybe I can find that right now. A lot of them are inverted crosses. Okay, that's what I wanted to say. I thought the one at the Psych Center was. Clearly, I was wrong. But the one at the Basilica is. And I'm not saying anything, but, you know, why would, why would, they, why would you do that if you did construct it from ground up? What, why would why would that be done? Because the floor plan is inverted. Okay. Also, I'll just put this as a teaser. If anybody can tell me what the shape of that looks like, maybe maybe a bowl for buffalo, huh? I don't want to say. <laughs> I, I'll take your I'll take your advice there, Mr. Brees. I mean, we'll say that that's a, we'll say that these are bullhorns, <laughs> okay, and uh, it looks like the shape of a, a bull, all right, in my opinion, you know, I don't, I, I'm not making any claims here, but in my opinion, it, that looks like it might be, I'm trying to make a nod to a buffalo, I guess, because it's buffalo, bullhorns and, you know, what's going on here, 
not to say that it's the other thing possibly, no, no possible way. If you know what I'm talking about, you know. If you don't, you don't. I don't want to get into it. Uh, the, the hinge should be the horn, but they're clearly, they're clearly uh, buffalo horns. <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah, that was uh, the um, edition of uh, Our Lady of Victory National Shrine and Basilica with a little bit of Father Baker and some orphan gravy for you for the edition of Bushwhack and Tartaria with Berserker Bear. I hope you liked it. Sorry that it was a long wait, but hopefully you like the new format, and that's how they should be going forward. Steadily trying to increase my game here. We got uh, more videos coming up with Campbell. Hopefully we'll get a, a round table with Campbell and Paul Cook, maybe Michelle Gibson, hopefully. I'd like to get everybody corralled in and um, on the same page here and keep the research moving forward. All right, so this is Dustin, Berserker Bear, from me to you. Love you guys. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, leave comments. I'll, I'll try to address them if I can. And I will catch you on the next one. All right, take care. Thanks for uh, stopping by. Peace out. Be safe.